Hello and welcome to Get Sleepy, the podcast where we listen, we relax, and we get sleepy. I'm Thomas, your host. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you had a great weekend. Tonight, Elizabeth will be reading our story. It's about a little girl who has a magical day in a dusty old wand shop, picking out her very first wand. So, let's settle in and prepare for a great night's rest. Begin with a nice, deep breath in, and slowly release the air back out feeling the contact of your body on the mattress below and the way it sinks a little deeper as your muscles relax. Continue with that rhythm of breathing for a few moments. We're incredibly blessed to have you all along for our story here tonight. And I want you to remember that there are many other people all around the world tuning in to listen just like you. We are so grateful for each and every one of you and I hope that it serves as a reminder that if you're feeling a little anxious, restless or struggling in any way, you are not alone. We're all here for the same purpose. That's to get the nourishing rest we desire and deserve. And with a community of fellow sleepyheads and the reassurance that that brings, we can all get there together. So just allow those deep breaths to settle your body and mind in the knowledge that there are so many wonderful people doing the same thing right now. I'll hand over to Elizabeth for our story, where we join a young girl named Tamara. She's standing on a cobblestone street filled with people chatting, walking, and window shopping. In front of her is an old wand shop, and Tamara is just about to turn the door handle and head inside. The door to Pem Shackle's wand shop creaked loudly. Tamara smiled to herself as she pulled it open, her hand lingering on the metal door handle. She peered into the darkness within. Outside, the world was bright. The sun sat tall and dazzling in its nest of blue. It was like a beacon calling everyone to come out and enjoy its wonderful warmth. The cobbled streets buzzed with people milling around, busying themselves with shopping. Families walked with their children, bags draped over their shoulders and clutched in their hands. Every bag was brimming with large, leather-bound books, 
wands and potion bottles. The air outside crackled with excitement. Inside the shop, it was quiet and peaceful. Stepping over the threshold, Tamara found herself in a small room, dimly lit by a single bulb hanging from the ceiling. A thin stream of sunlight filtered in through a circular window in the door. She waited until her eyes adjusted to the dark room before she let go of the door and allowed it to swing shut. There were two other people already in the store, a tall woman and a little boy about Tamara's age. The woman wore a big purple hat whose enormous brim hid almost all of her face. A large white feather poked out of it, and Tamara pushed down the urge to touch it. The boy beside her already had a wand in his hand. He stared at it in awe and stroked its handle gently. They didn't seem to notice Tamara's presence yet, and she stayed quiet in the doorway. For a moment, Tamara closed her eyes and inhaled the scent of wood and mothballs, which reminded her of her grandmother's attic. The shop smelled old, and dusty, with a hint of cedar and resin. Opening her eyes again, she looked more closely at her surroundings. In front of her was a short oak desk, and behind it a red velvet curtain that parted slightly to reveal a long, dark corridor. She could hear someone moving things around on the other side of the curtain. Tamara realized she was holding her breath as she approached the desk. She was finally going to meet Shackle. He was something of a legend in her household. He was the person who had sold everyone she knew their wands. Her mother had a Pemshackle wand, as did her grandmother. Excitement buzzed in her stomach. She couldn't believe it. Here she was, ready to get her very own wand, taking her first step towards her future as a wizard. Tamara's mind flashed with the images of the stories she'd been told ever since she was a little girl. All she had ever wanted was this, to be like her family, like her mother, to be a great wizard. This was a moment she had dreamed about. She couldn't wait to show her mother the wand Pemshackle helped her choose. When they first left home for the shopping trip today, Tamara had 
begged her mother to let her go into Pem Shackles alone. Somehow, it made her feel more grown up. When she'd imagined this moment in the past, she was always alone in the shop. This felt like a private time to her when she and her magic collided and formed an eternal bond. But she didn't mind that the woman and the boy were in the shop too. Now that she was really here, she found the presence of other people comforting and reassuring. Tamara refocused her attention on the desk in front of her and the corridor beyond. She suppressed a grin as she reached a shaky hand towards the bell on the desk and let it ring once. Almost immediately, she heard what sounded like wood and sawdust pattering to the floor. She glanced around to see if the others had noticed the commotion too, but they were otherwise engaged. The woman's hat was now levitating off her head. Tamara's eyes widened as she watched the boy raising his wand in her direction. He seemed just as surprised to be doing magic as Tamara was to see him do it. Just then, an old man appeared from the hallway behind the velvet curtain. He had wiry hair and thin rimmed glasses perched atop his nose. Can I help you? He asked Tamara. His voice was soft and gentle, but seemed to carry the wisdom of ages. When he spoke, the little boy fumbled and dropped his wand. Tamara turned just in time to see it roll away from him across the floor. The woman straightened her hat on her head. She furrowed her eyebrows as she looked down at the little boy who gazed back up at her shyly and shrugged. Tamara suppressed a giggle and turned back to face Pem Shackle. The skin at the corners of his eyes crinkled with quiet laughter. She imagined he'd seen many young wizards in training drop their wands over the years. Though Tamara suspected he already knew who she was, she introduced herself politely. I'm Tamara Hillwick, sir, she said. I'm here to find my wand. Pem Shackle smiled and placed his hands on the desk in front of him. Then he peered deeply into her eyes. He had a kind face, Tamara decided. For a few moments, the two of them stood still, gazing at one another. Then Pem Shackle turned and walked back behind the curtain. When he pushed open the fabric, Tamara caught sight of hundreds of wooden boxes. 
Each was long and thin and painted a different shade of purple, green, blue, yellow, orange, and red. A few of the boxes at the very top were silver, black, and white, but they were dusty and looked as though they hadn't been moved in decades. Pemshackle tapped the ends of a few boxes and then turned, walking back to the desk. Hold out your hands, please, he said to her, peering over his glasses. Tamara stretched her arms out before her so that the tips of her fingers brushed the bell once more. Pemshackle muttered to himself quietly as his eyes scanned her palms. When he was finished doing whatever it was he was doing, Tamara watched him shuffle back behind the curtain. Through the slim opening in the fabric, she saw him run his fingertips across a line of wooden boxes. Perhaps one of them held her future within it, she thought. She eagerly followed the movements of his hands with her eyes. There were so many boxes to choose from. Secretly, Tamara hoped for a yellow box. It was the color she liked best given her love of sunflowers. Having a pretty yellow case for her wand would be wonderful. She imagined how nice it would look in her room. Hemshackle's nimble fingers stopped on a red box but Tamara couldn't feel disappointed. She was far too excited. He wiggled the box out of its place, wedged among four other boxes, as Tamara held her breath. Pemshackle moved the curtain out of the way, and returned to the main room where she was standing. He placed it on the desk in front of her. Tamara felt her heart begin to beat a little faster. Could this be it? She wondered. She reached out and opened the red box. Inside, resting on a bed of sawdust, was a thick, rounded wand. The tip wasn't thin and pointed like her mother's. Instead, it looked rather stubby. The handle was quite simple, with no ornate design and no fancy engraving. The wood didn't seem elegant to Tamara. In fact, it just looked like an ordinary stick. She knew she couldn't be picky if the wand turned out to be a good match, but she didn't feel drawn to this one. There was no magic pull. Pam Shackle gestured to her, and Tamara plucked the wand from the sawdust. 
It slipped into her fingers with ease, but it felt wrong somehow. It was much too big for her hand and too smooth, like it had been oiled. She turned it over, feeling the hard wood in her palm before Pemshackle gave her a small nod of encouragement. She tentatively flicked her wrist. Absolutely nothing happened. No hats levitated. No lights flickered. It was as if she'd never touched the wand at all. The woman and the boy looked over at her as though waiting for something to happen. When nothing did, they turned back to one another. Pemshackle shook his head and, pulling the wand from Tamara's hand, placed it gently back in the bowl. He carried it through the curtain and slipped it back into the empty spot on the shelf. Tamara tried to refrain from letting out a sigh of relief. She didn't know what her wand would look like, but she knew she didn't want it to be so ordinary. As she waited for Pemshackle to pick something else out for her, she listened to the quiet conversation behind her. The woman, apparently, was the boy's aunt. They were waiting for someone to meet them before going on to finish the rest of their shopping. Tamara looked over at the boy. He was excited about the wand he held protectively in his hand. The woman seemed as though she'd been in this shop a thousand times before. Tamara wondered how many other nieces and nephews she'd escorted here. She also wondered what it was like when the woman was her own age, the first time she'd come to Pemshackles for her very first wand. Tamara wondered if the woman had felt the same butterflies that were in her own stomach now, or if she came in confidently, sure she would be able to find a wand that was right for her. Tamara could feel her butterflies continuing to flutter as Pemshackle turned to face her with another box in his hand. This one was a teal colour. It also wasn't yellow, but hopefully what it held inside would be just the wand for her. She eased it open and Tamara smiled. This wand was beautiful. It had a spiraling tail that reminded her of a mermaid. The tip of the wand was pointed and it was made from a light oak. When she picked it up, she was surprised to feel how delicate it was. But while this wand didn't give her the same wrong feeling as the last one, 
she thought it was too light and too delicate. It was though it would break into a million pieces in her hands if she wasn't careful with it. Pam Shackle nodded at her. Once again, she waved it gently through the air. For the second time, absolutely nothing happened. Gingerly, she placed the wand back into its bed of sawdust. Once it was out of her hand, She gave a sigh of relief. She hadn't realized until now just how much she'd been afraid of breaking it. Slowly, she pushed the box across the desk towards Pem Shackle. His eyes glittered and he winked at her before turning back to the heavy curtain. Tamara didn't say anything out loud, but she was beginning to wonder if she'd ever find the perfect one. But Pem Shackle didn't seem worried. He was patient and kind as he continued browsing the wooden boxes. She heard him start humming to himself while he absent-mindedly tapped boxes one at a time. Then he turned to face her. Through the curtain, he asked her to tell him something about herself. Tamara thought about it for a moment. I love sunflowers she said quietly. Pem Shackle nodded to himself and turned back to the shelves. This time, it only took him a few seconds to find the right box, which he set down on the desk. It was long and thin, with a bright coat of lemon-yellow paint A picture of a leaf was stamped on the lid. Tamara hesitantly stroked the engraving with her finger. The box felt cool and smooth beneath her skin. Something stirred within her as she moved to lift the lid. It was as though her fingertips were magnets and she was being pulled towards whatever was hidden inside this box. She lifted the lid carefully and felt her heart beat louder as she discovered what lay within. The wand was smooth and made of a dark wood that reminded her of nighttime in her favorite forest. As she looked at it now, she could see the gnarled trunks of the trees she played under. She could feel the rough bark beneath her palms and smell the evening mist on the leaves. She brushed the glossy wood with her fingertips. The wand slipped into her hand with ease and settled into her palm like it had been made just for her. The handle boasted deep engravings that curled around it like vines. 
Tamara ran a thumb over them. The wand was absolutely perfect. With a twinkle in his eye, Pem Shackle nodded to her. She lifted her hand and gave the wand a slight wave. A river of warmth traveled up her arm like sun-kissed honey. It filled her with a sense of belonging, as though she and this wand were puzzle pieces that fit together perfectly. As the woman, the boy, and Pem Shackle watched, the air around Tamara seemed to come alive. Waves of golden sparkles swirled about her like a shining mist. She beamed with joy, knowing deep in her heart she had finally found her wand. She gripped her wand tightly and grinned at Pem Shackle. He laughed and returned her smile. Watching Tamara reminded the woman in the purple hat of when she got her wand all those years ago. Holding it in her hand had made her feel like the world made sense for the very first time. She smiled as the happy memory flickered through her mind. The boy grinned beside her, holding his wand a little more proudly. They'd both found what they were looking for today. A moment later, the golden glow around Tamara subsided. She placed the wand back in the lemon yellow box with care and tucked it under her arm. This was definitely the one she'd be taking home tonight to show to her mother. Pem Shackle handed Tamara a soft cloth bag to protect her wand box. She slipped the wood inside and held it close. She thanked Pem Shackle for all his help and then turned and headed for the door. As her hand touched the smooth metal handle, she felt a little older than when she'd first entered the shop. Tamara smiled. She was on her way to becoming a wizard. With that thought, she stepped outside and on to the cobbled path leading home.